All right. Question already. Oh, I thought we had a question already. Um, very excited about this uh, topic because, like I said, I've just come through the uh, the master artist thing. By the way, a little bit of a clarification before we start. It's technically called the artist category, but everybody calls it MA or the master artist, or old school people call it AI, electronic imaging. But I think it sounds weird to call it the A category. So people will still call it MA, but every once in a while you're going to have someone correct you and go, it's technically not MA, that's the degree you get as master artist. But just FYI, for purposes of here, we will go uh, master artist referring to that whole category. But um, it's interesting because I had gotten my master's degree in, in the, the master photography the, in the main you know, PO photographic open division and then started on this other one and I kind of went from doing really well and felt like I had it all figured out to all of a sudden I was going 0 for 4, 1 for 4. Um, and so it was kind of an interesting experience to start over again. So I, I think that was nice from an educational standpoint that uh, I, I've recently been where you are in the kind of helpless situation. So we're going to try and discuss a little bit about what the, oh my God, people just keep moving farther back. Oh my God, just come on up here. Um, so we're going to talk about the differences of the categories, what exactly this category is, then we'll go through some examples of some work, and then after that we'll answer probably 75, 80 questions until it gets dark out. Okay, so that's the plan going forward. If you get stumped on something in, in between, feel free to stop me. Uh, otherwise, just make it, write it down, and we'll have definitely a big question and answer at the end. Fair enough? Good, 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 good. Okay. My remote's not working, so I'm going to have to do this manually. So it's not going to be as polished. Okay, so MA versus PO. Just to clarify again, MA, Master Artist category. PO, Photographic Open. Photographic Open is what most of you think about when you think of photographic competition. You think of the PO. We don't call it that, but most people are entering PO. That's you know, your portraits, your illustrative landscapes, all that stuff. What, what DPPA has always done, that's all Photographic Open. Um, albums kind of fall into the same category, all that type stuff is towards your master's degree, which is the, uh, the yellow? I always get the yellow and the blue confused. The yellow ribbon is a master. The blue, craftsman, and then red is the uh, artist. You may see a white one, usually someone older because they don't, haven't offered it in like 15 years or something like that, and that's what used to be the artist degree. Um, but So sometimes if you see a white stripe, that's what that is, but there's not too many people floating around with that. So we'll talk about the different categories. And get this over closer to me. Okay, so in PO, in general, an image is scored on the final what you came up with, right? The final image. We're going to look at it and score it. And it doesn't matter whether you're like, well, the thing you don't know is I was, I mean, people do this all the time. Because I mean, I'll I've been judging, I've been an approved judge for six, seven years now. And so I've done a lot of districts, I've done states, done the national competition the last probably four years. And, uh, People always want to come tell you how difficult the shot was. Well, I mean, I had to lean over this cliff to get this shot. I mean, I had to do, this kid was really bad, whatever. I mean, all that stuff is your problem. This is the thing you got, it's, it doesn't factor in at all. If it take, took you seven days, 24-7 in Photoshop, not my problem. That's all your problem. All I care about as a judge is the final image. Is it a beautiful image that you've created? That's ultimately what, what we care about. The de degree of difficulty is not really considered. Um, MA, you're also judged on that final image, but you're also judged on the process. How hard was it for you to get from here to there? That's why you'll say, here's what I started with, these pieces, here's what I ended up with. Okay? So you're still accountable for the final image, but you're also accountable for the, the process, the journey, whatever you want to call that, the work that went into it. Make sense? Kind of the equivalent I tell people is like if, if someone hired you to clean up trash in their property and the next day you just showed up at their office and said, okay, I cleaned it all up and they look at it and said, okay, it looks nice now. Versus you show up at their office with six giant trash bags and say, look at all this trash I found on your property. I picked, you know, it took me all day to get all these, you'd say, wow, that's, you're much more impressed by the person that can show you the six giant bags of trash versus the person that just says, okay, don't worry, I've cleaned it up. Same type concept, you're proving your work, or just showing, look at all these hoops I had to jump through. And um, you have to kind of fulfill both of those. Okay? So far, so good? Let's get to the next part here. Um, NPO. You have to have captured the, the primary image. It's kind of a little bit of a gray area, but um, you, you're, you're, you know, used to be, in my opinion, 
you should have captured everything. You should have photographed the background, the subject, the bird that's in the sky. The way I've always done it, I, I think you ought to do all of it yourself. But technically, you can get by. You can go out and buy a, a background from somebody and drop it in behind your ballerina. And, um, and technically, that's legal, assuming you've got permission to use all those images. Um, however, an artist, you don't have to have taken any of the images. You could call up. Margaret and say, will you send me 25 of your dog images on a white background or something? If she agrees to do it and gives you permission and you want to arrange them into some sort of a crazy composite, that's perfectly legal. You, don't have to, you really don't even have to be a photographer to do this degree. Um, so, but, but PO, you, you're, you're, taking the, you're taking the image versus MA. As long as you get permission, you can use other people's stuff because, again, we're working on the process. It's perfectly legal in the MA CAD, for example, to go onto a stock website and purchase a bunch of elements and compile it in together. Make sense? Okay. Again, a lot of these are hard to enforce. I'm just telling you what the rule is. Okay. Big difference is in PO, you're trying to hide your technique. All you want them to see is the final image. You want them to go, man, how did they get there? How did they, where was this place? How did they do all this? Versus in the artist category, you want to show your technique. You want to say, look, I took all these pieces and built this. So there's no question about whether that guy's really on the road or whether that road's really attached to the city or whether the clouds are really there. Um, you know, like all the time in, in, in photographic open, we'll see a, a beautiful landscape come through, right? There's a big mountain range with sweeping fields in front of it and beautiful, big, dramatic clouds in the sky. And you're sitting there going, probably drop those clouds in, right? It's pretty rare that you show up somewhere and the light hits perfectly, everything, the, the horses are right there in place, and these giant billowing clouds right after a storm are in the sky. I mean, it just doesn't happen very often. So you kind of know that the person probably dropped those clouds in. And so when those images come in competition, a judge, first thing they're doing is scanning that horizon line, looking for telltale signs of where that stuff doesn't match up or where the light doesn't match up and things like that. It's hard, but it's, it's a little tricky because you kind of give them the benefit of the doubt and you go, maybe this guy really was there, right? As opposed to in the artist category, when you show them, okay, well, that city had no clouds behind it. I added the clouds. You're telling them ahead of time. It's, it's almost like a magician saying, I'm going to produce, I've got this ball, and I'm going to try and get it into this cup without you seeing it. It's going to be a lot harder on me, right? As opposed to we were just talking, and while I'm talking to you, I slip it in the cup and go, where'd the ball go? Oh, it's in the cup. Unless someone was watching it, I could probably pull that off. When I tell you, watch this ball in my hand, I'm going to move it into this cup, much harder trick, right? Make sense? That's, the, that's what you're up against, is you've got to show, look how difficult this was. I mean, I... What was really hard for me was as a judge, on an artist panel, you have to have, you got six judges on a panel, okay? Three of them have to be artist judges. Three of them have to be, have the ribbon and have been approved to judge artists, okay? And so the other three don't. They just have to be judges. And this is, of course, I'm talking about at a district or at IPC. So... There were times that I, I've judged, before I had the degree, before I'd even started entering, I would be on a panel judging this type stuff. And that's really tough because you're sitting there going, well, I don't know how they did that. And it makes it really difficult to, to, to tell how difficult it is. The other problem with this is the degree is, uh, the category or it, the whole field is very wide. You could have people doing restoration, right? And people take the old pictures that are all torn up and make them look nice, that's an eligible entry in here. You can do composites, stuff like Richard does, right? These fantasy composites, puts all the stuff together. Perfectly legal. You can have a painter type stuff where you take a portrait, go in and apply painter to it, enter that. So there's a very, I think some people technically just paint something. Uh, freehand draw and paint everything, doesn't even have to have a photographic element in it. And in the artist category, that's okay. So it's very broad. So I could be very talented painter. I could be, you know, I don't know, Jeremy Sutton or somebody that we all agree is one of the top Corel painter people. And he gets his master's artist degree, no problem with all the painter stuff. But now he's judging a composite or a photo restoration. May have never done it in his life. It's hard, you know, you're, you're not going to have different, uh, it's not going to have a lot of people that do all those things. 
So it, it, the burden shifts to you, the entrant, to say, look at all this. Look how difficult this was to combine. And so one of the things that I think I would kind of use in the back of my mind when I was judging something like this, I would look at it and say, could I do that? You know, is that something that I could put together? And if I feel like I could do it pretty easily and blend it all together and it would look just great, it's probably not going to score as high with me because I'm like, well, I think most people can do that. If it's something where you're looking at it going, how in the world did they do this? It's going to score higher, you know? You're still going back looking for stuff. You're like, okay, well, they dropped in that bird. Let me look at that bird really closely and see if I can see some sort of extraction fringing or anything like that. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at the shadows, the light coming from different directions. I mean, I'm still going to troubleshoot it, but your initial impact comes from, oh my gosh, how did they do that, right? And so you help yourself by, by showing how far it was you went or, or what, where you started. Make sense? So good? Okay, so we're going to go through some tips for this category, some in general tips. Not rules necessarily. There's going to be exceptions to all these things, but you need to show a big improvement. One of the mistakes I made when I first started entering, I do a lot of Corel Painter. And I would start with a really nice studio portrait of somebody. And then I would take it, paint it, make it look really nice. But the problem is when you looked at them side by side, you would say, well, that studio portrait looked pretty nice already. You used soft light, so it's kind of fallen off on the, the subject, and she's posed nicely, and the clothes are flowing. I mean, if you've done a good job with the portrait, and it's, you know, a nice very beautiful portrait already. So you took it from a from here on the beauty scale to here, that's not much of a difference, right? As opposed to you take a picture of a little girl sitting on a bus in the backyard in broad daylight and then you take her and you drop her into a fantasy scene or field and flowers and put in a little house behind her the chair that she's sitting in, change her outfit. It's a lot more work. You're taking something, a bunch of pieces that we're down here and making a piece that's up here. That's a big difference between going from here to here than from all these to here. And that's a hard thing to get in your head because especially if you're a good, I'm good at portraits, I can create a really nice portrait. That's just what I do. And so what I kept to do was take one of those portraits and elevate it through painter. And I realized kind of near the end of the process that I would have been better off just taking a snapshot uh, of a kid you know, standing out on my patio and then totally fixing it all up. Because then it's like, wow, they went from this to this. And that's what you got to do. You've got to have a big jump. There's got to be a massive improvement in it. That's what's so hard about entering painter stuff is, one, people don't know. If you do painter and you know how much work it takes to do a, a nice painting, it takes hours and hours and hours, right? But then someone will come along and they'll use Topaz Impression or some sort of a other filter auto paint or something and a lot of judges can't see the difference and they look at it and they're like oh this is this person must have spent a lot of time painting this and you're like no those I can that exact brush pattern is replicated all the way here it's, you know it doesn't follow the form it's crossing over the arms I mean I can look at something and tell that it's a filter almost immediately um, but I do a lot of that stuff there's plenty of people that I judge with that are really good judges and they look at it and go, well, that's beautiful. And you're like, what are you talking about? They, they, it's a filter and they've cleaned out the face. You know, the face looks photographic and everything else looks like impressionistic. It's like, that's, nobody paints like that. But others will look at, others, there'll be something that I'll look at and say, wow, this is really good brushwork. I can see the texture and how they vary it. And the person next to me will go, eh, it's just, eh, it looks too sloppy. It's a personal preference. You know, you walk in someone's house and they've got an accent wall painted pink or something like that and some people go oh that's pretty cool I like that accent wall other people's like why is that one wall pink and all the rest of the walls are white you know you start getting into a taste thing as opposed to again Richard's always a great example some of his crazy composites you may look at it and go look I'm not into the whole dragons thing and all that thing but you still look at it and go holy smokes how did somebody put that together you don't have to like that style to appreciate the work that went into it and so it's you've got to show a big difference between your sources and your and your final image. Okay, that's big. I can't stress that one enough. Um, show your source images, and this is a very tough subject. I'm on the IPC committee, or I will be for about another couple of weeks, um, and we're the committee that puts together the the rules basically for competition. We're the ones that run the summer, the big national judging, and we put 
the rule book together, I guess you'd say. And there was a big topic that comes up every year. Came up again this year at the judges' refresher course was, should we require people to do um, source images? Because people still enter the category without source images. And the problem you have as a judge, I know how far you took it. You know, if I was looking at justice image by itself, I would say, okay, they probably put him in front of a chalkboard with some stuff on it. I mean, they obviously did something to the hair, but I can't really tell. I mean, the face doesn't really look that processed. However, when you look at the face compared to the source face, it's got a lot more highlight and shadow, but you wouldn't have gotten credit for that. Without. And this is really not a huge jump. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I would like to have a bigger jump from the source to the face. But I, this one more got in because of the exploding head part, which is a little more complex. But, um, but still, from that source image to that is a pretty good sized jump, enough of a jump for it to merit. You know, it's not going to go lone, but it, it, it's a solid merit. <coughs> Makes sense? Um, but you have to show the source image, and it's it, it just, when you enter something in the artist category without a source image, one of two things. One, we either look at it and we go, well, I think these people enter, because people enter the wrong category all the time. Someone that's new comes in and looks at photographic open, artist. Like, oh, no, 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 I'm an artist. <laughs> My stuff needs to go. Right. People do it all the time. They, and it's just a picture of just a portrait of someone sitting on a chair. And uh, it could be something that would score a, a 90 in, the, in a normal competition. But in the artist category, you go, well, yeah, it's beautiful. We've checked that box. But they've done no work to it. It looks like they captured it in the camera this way. It's not going to get close to meriting. Uh, because you didn't show the source image. And, of course, the big thing that always comes up, well, Larry, that messes up my composition. Right? I have to put this stupid border around it and have the little images off to the side. Uh, it, it messes up the composition, right? Show your source image. I, I don't know how else to put it. If it was up to me, it would be a rule that you're disqualified if you don't have it. So I've been judging this category for five years now. I don't, I don't remember ever meriting something that didn't have source images. I probably did but I don't remember ever doing it. It's, it's rare that it happens. I mean, it's got to be one of these things that's just such a crazy, over-the-top composite type thing or a abstract painting type thing where you're looking at it and going, man, I don't even know where they started on this thing. But it's rare. So can you do it? Sure. And someone's going to come up to me next year and say, oh, look, I entered one without it, and it went loan. It may happen, but I, I would tell you, go get a loan book and go to the category, look up all the master artist ones, and count how many of them show the sources and how many of them don't. And I, I, I'd be shocked if there's more than a handful of them that don't have the, the thing. And chances are, if you're that good that you can create something that wow, then you know, you're probably already have the degree at this point. So if you take nothing else away from this, show the source images. And it's tough because it, it, the worst part I hate is I don't like the fact that the final piece doesn't look as good. Um, but it's, you know, you're showing your tracks. You're saying, look, I pulled him off a of background, so check his hair really close. I mean, you're telling the judge, here's what I did. I added that chalk board, you know, make, it, make, it look, make sure that looks real. Uh, I did this. I changed out this. You know, you're telling them what to look for. I mean, you're saying, here's what I did. See if you can catch me. And they're going to look in. They're going to look right at it. I mean, if I was judging this, first thing I would do is I'd be looking around the hair because I know you may have done extraction, right, especially curly hair like that. That's, that's going to be the most telltale place that you're going to mess up on this image, probably, is uh, the hair extraction. So that's the first thing I would check all around the edge. And then I would, you know, look for other things. So like you going back and forth looking for obvious differences, which sometimes is a problem as a judge when there's a source image that you can't tell what it is. Like, well, like if I had a bird right above his head, and you're like, where's the bird? I don't see the bird anywhere. So you've got to be very careful. Because maybe you use the bird, use the feather for hair or something like that. I don't know, but there's times all, all the time that someone will put a source piece on there and you're like, I don't understand what the, bird, what the bird's for. So if it's the bird's feather, try and zoom in just on that feather and show what it is that you used. But can't stress that part enough. And um, the last part is you got to go back to when all the dust settles, the final image of the boy, would that, would that merit? Um, because I entered this um, same piece at Southwest, it didn't merit. And so I went to, uh, I mean, I got a little bit of an advantage that a lot of my friends are judges, right? So uh, I talked to Michael Titmans, who was the JC, 
at Southwest this year for the, the MA. And I was like, do you remember when it came through? Because I wasn't at the judging. And we talked about it a little bit. And, and finally it came down to, he goes, if you just look at the basic image, would you merit that? And I was like, huh, no, I guess I would probably. And he's like, well, there's your problem. And so I had to go back and refine that final image to the point that if I got rid of everything else and entered it in the portrait category, the PO category, would it merit by itself? And I got to the point that I felt like it did, put it all back together, and, and it, it merited at Nationals. So, you know, was it a matter of me making those changes? Did I just get a more favorable crew at Nationals? Who knows? But one way or another it got in, but it barely got in. You know, so again, when you look at it, a bit, huge jump from that to that, probably not a huge jump. That's why it probably barely got in. Make sense? Yes. Source um, images. Talk a little bit more about that. You made a comment about the bird versus the feather. Right. When I show the source image, am I going to show the full source image, or can I crop the source image to just show what I used in the source image? I would show it, it, like if you changed out his eyes from another picture, I would probably take the picture of him and I would just have a box around the eyes, gotcha. because otherwise I'm looking at it and I'm and I've got one coming up that I'll show you where I, I kind of messed up on that. And I've got an image you can't tell what it is. And uh, it, it just confuses the judge. It's not like somebody counts off, like, well, you've got something, I'm taking away five points. I mean, it doesn't work that way. But you don't want them hung up on it going, well, why does he have two pictures of the little boy? You know, and he's in the same, because you're probably going to have him in the exact same pose both ways. If you just took the eyes, I would just show the eyes. You've got to lead me, you're just, you've got to lead me right to, here's what I did. I took the eyes and changed them out. Again, if you didn't show those eyes, It'd be legal, but then you're not getting credit for it. Now you're not showing me the giant bags of garbage. You know, you got to. If you went and did the work, go ahead and show me one, so I can look for it. But two, I go, okay, yeah, he did a good job changing out the eyes. Those look good. Oh yeah, he did a good job adding the chalk marks or whatever. So, yeah, you know, if you don't show it, you're not getting credit for it. All right. So I'm gonna look at a few samples, and I'll kind of give you a, a little bit of my thoughts on it. Um, Okay, so this was one that basically, I mean, again, when you're looking for this category, for me, the hardest part is coming up with the ideas. And this is just something, basically, I saw someone had done a similar type thing. I don't remember where I saw it on Google or something like that or other, uh, I mean, on Google Images or something like that. But uh, at some point, I saw someone doing the zipper fruit thing. I mean, it's a pretty common when you start looking for it. Um, and so it was just more a matter of could I do it type thing. And it was pretty clear. I mean, you show, I mean, everybody knows that you added the zipper. But this way you show the source of the zipper down there. You show what the orange was and you show the apple. And then from there, it's a matter of making it all come together. And, uh, for example, the, the uh, reflection, it's obviously created, right? If it was something that I had added, I would have shown it. But the fact that I didn't show it, you kind of assume that that's something I just created from merging the What is all this? It's not on my screen. It must be something. Yeah, it must be on the projector. Um, are they? Yeah. Was it on the last slide too? They're fruit flies. Okay. Yeah, fruit flies. Okay. Well, that's just some little speckling I added to give it a little character. But um, so this to me is an example of a. It, no one's, uh, someone that does a lot of digital work is not going to look at it and go, holy smokes, how did he do that? That's so o over the top. Um, people are going, yeah, I think I could do that. You know, that's what I thought when I saw it. I was like, yeah, I could do that. It was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be to make it look good. But it doesn't have that factor where you look at it and go, holy, I don't know where to even begin for something like that. So that's another example of a borderline merit. Got through, did it. In fact, it's funny, it's on the, if you go to the, I think it's the Northeast or the North Central District, it's one of the sample images they have up on their sign-up page. That's kind of funny, but um, anyways. So let's jump on to this next one. All right, now whose was this? Ah, yes, there he is back there. And I'm sorry, we're getting cropped off here at the bottom. Um, very good looking uh, composite here. You guys photographed all the things here. Uh, put it all together, very nice. The, uh, the reason I wanted to include this one was we had a, we've actually been going back and forth on email because one of the things you can run into is copyright problem. I was at a district year before last, and this guy, his whole thing was he created movie posters. And um, 
it would be f like a fake movie, you know, and they would make it look, they, he'd photo his friends running and shooting a gun and they would, you know, shoot to kill and it was like just a fake movie poster. It was pretty cool. But he had like the Fox Spotlight logo down there or whatever. He had a bunch of these logos on there and I think it ended up getting, it was either pulled or, uh, I don't remember if it was actually DQ'd or what happened at the time. But it, it caused trouble because you had copyrighted stuff in there, which, you know, PPA is kind of in a weird situation because they're out there fighting for our copyrights and trademarks and all that type stuff. And then, you know, and, and so basically when I saw this image and I said, well, let me run, I went ahead and sent it to Rich Newell and said, hey, is something like this going to be okay? And he's like, yeah, I'd watch out for that. It might get DQ'd. And so then I went back and he's like, oh no, the PPA's already told me it's okay. I'm like, huh. So after that, it led to a whole afternoon of phone calls for me. Thank you very much. But I talked to, to Randy McNeely, who's the head of all judges right now. He is the godfather of judges right now. Uh, I talked to Rich Newell, who's kind of the PPA head of judging. And so, uh, and the, the ruling I got from them was that, well, one, it would depend on who the uh, P P PEC chairman is next year when all this happens. That's actually Doran Wilson, who I also talked to. But here's what I came up with, was that it would probably not be disqualified that you would be allowed to do it because you run into a thing of for personal use. Now you can do this for your personal use and uh, th they don't seem to worry about it. It's something you're doing like if you want to go home and draw a picture of Yoda on, on your sketch pad or something, nobody's going to come after you for that. The problem you start getting into is when you're publishing it, when you're making money off of it, when you're putting it out there. So the answer I got was they would allow it as an entry because you're pretty much just letting someone judge your own private work. The problem is you would probably get excluded from the loan book. So if it did go loan or showcase, you would probably not end up in the book. So I guess that's a good problem to have, I guess, if you're just starting out. I'm like, oh, good, just give me the loan print. I don't, just give me the ribbon. I don't need the book. But that was the answer I got. And the problem with that that I had was I was like, well, if we've got a problem with putting it in the loan book, why are we allowing it as an entry? You know, but whatever, so... That was the answer I got, so to answer your question, it sounds like it would be legal. I would certainly hang on to that email because, you know, a good chance that uh, someone is going to get it and try and DQ it when they see that. But uh, my advice would be to just avoid the whole situation. Clearly, the compositing is something you're good at. You can probably do it. If you can do it with these people, you could do it with humans or whatever else. You know, I talked to Richard Sturdivant again about this whole thing because he does a lot of that type stuff. And he said the problem is you're also... The other thing you've got involved is like the Yoda statue. I mean, it's not obviously really Yoda that you photographed. You photographed the statue. Well, some sort of an artist had to create that statue. And so they, that's technically a you know, derivative art. That's what they created, and you're photographing something that someone else created. So, but again, the PPA official answer was the fact that uh, they're going to probably allow it in competition, but you're not going to be able to use it much other places. So my advice would be if you're going to put all that work into it, do it with stuff that you can go the distance with and show it all wherever you want, put it on your website and all that type of stuff would be my suggestion. Someone over here have a question? I see a hand go up. Anyone? You? Margaret. Oh, there's a point at Margaret. I was just going to make the same comment that, that you did, is that you get in so much trouble with derivative work that it's just, just stay away from Right. It. Yeah, because, and someone was saying, well, you... P and PBA, I think, said, told you it was editorial. Um, I think, you know, you could certainly say, well, you're doing a satire and try and use that type of... But like I said, for me, if I'm going to put that amount of work, I'd rather have... You know, what happens if that scores off the chart and, you know, you're GIA eligible and all this type stuff, and they go, oh, no, pull it out. You know, we can't do it. I mean, it'd be just the same amount of work for you to do it. A similar, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather you put all the work into something that you could go the distance with and it could be on the cover of PPA magazine. I mean, there's no way PPA is putting it on the cover of their magazine. You know, not that that's going to happen to you, but to me, I'd, I'd just soon be able to have, I don't want anything holding me back. <laughs> but, but that's the ruling that I, I got, so I, you, but hang on to that email. Any other questions about that? Again, it's very murky. I don't know that I've got an official answer beyond what I've said, but just be on the lookout for that stuff with logos, because um, you know, people will point out, well, what about um, someone does a picture of someone leaning up against a, an old barn that has an old Dr. Pepper sign on it or something like that? You know, it's got the Dr. Pepper logo. Is that, you know, copyright? Well, I don't know. I mean, so. That would be trademark. A trademark, but. Well, makes sense. Disney characters. All right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, again, 
I would prefer you just put it in separate. Be my two cents, but you know, but a beautiful composite though. I think it would I, I think it would do very well. Uh, as far as that goes, it's blended together nicely. I mean, it's fantastic. The problem here's the other problem you run into, and I'm telling you some of this just as a judge. This is not an official answer, but. The other problem you run into is all the judges are sitting there, and this comes up during a challenge. And let's say I'm the judge that doesn't like it. I'm against it for some reason. And it comes around to me, and I'm going to say, well, this is, you know, cop this is all Star Wars. I mean, they're basically infringing on Star Wars copyright. Now, the, the JC is probably going to shut me down and say, look, that's not our job. Just judge what's in front of you. But once I've said it, everybody else is going to be going, huh, yeah, it's, this is, what's the point on even putting this loan if it's not going to be able to go in the loan book? I'm not saying this would happen, but it could happen. So, again, uh, avoid. All right, I'm sorry, I didn't put names with any of these so to identify. Remain anonymous. Is this person here? Yeah. All right. First problem, of course, we talked about what? What's the first problem? Source images, right? We need the source images. Um, oh, right. Source. right. Uh, Wait till you see the source on that one. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, why, why, oh, my God? Well, it's in a giant studio, and there's all kind of props around her. Mm -hmm. uh, not so lovely props, by the way. All the more reason to show it. Yeah. Yeah, all the more reason to show it. Look like they got the props from Target. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's all the better, you know. If you had her under flat light and you went in and created a directional light, you're going to get point, not point, get points for it. You're going to get credit, however you want to do it. I mean, you've got to show me that you took it from here to here. And from just this, it's not enough. I don't think it would merit because I can't tell what you did. You know, you've got this repetition thing a, a, a lot, which I don't know how that's done. My, my guess is it's, it's layers stacked on top. I mean, it's probably something more complex or less complex. I don't know. But without being able to see it, now you're up to me going, I mean, my old iMac used to do this when it would, it would freeze up and it would start making copies of stuff all the way through. I was like, man, maybe the guy's computer froze up and he screen captured it. I mean, I, you know, yeah, no, I'm sure it is. But if I see a picture of her and then I see a picture of, like, like, I don't know whether this is some sort of a different hand that you've merged, her hand and you've just painted it blue. No, she was already painted. Right, but see that I don't know that. That's what I'm telling you is, as a judge, if this is all I have to go with, is that something you did? Because maybe if her hand was there and you painted that all on, no, I think to me that's more impressive than you photographed it. Yeah, so it, right, no. So that's why this category is so hard without. Now this would not be one that we would it would come through and we would go. This guy's in the wrong category. He doesn't know what he's doing. I mean. People would be able to tell that this was an electronic. You know, Tom Rouse does a lot of, I mean, much more complex, crazy. If you guys have seen Tom Rouse stuff. And he used to not enter uh, source images. But it got to the point where I think he got sick of losing scores because people would say, oh, it looks like he just did this and the person's standing on the box. And he's like, well, she wasn't standing on the box. She was, I put that there and I put that there and I put that there. So um, that's why it's, it's almost impossible to give you any sort of an idea without the, uh, the things. But you know, certainly heading in the right direction, but you're going to have to apply. When you put those source images on, is someone going to look at it and say, man, he took this, this, and this, and took it to here, which is a vague. And, you know, and it may be that I think that you did. And Margaret may look at it and say, well, I could do that in five minutes. I got an action that does that. I mean, and even if she doesn't, if that's what she thinks, it, you know what I mean? And so then you go on to the next person, the next person. And so, it's got to be that point where it's an obvious, took it from here to here. And it's not always easy to show, especially if you do a lot of the artwork, drawing stuff in. That's why you'll see some people, and they're sort like someone, let's say you did just a painting from scratch is what you entered. I would still show, I would, my first one would be probably a sketch of the, the stormtrooper. No, no, stormtrooper. But the little girl, sketch her out. Then the next one is you've blocked in some color. Then you've maybe, be, you know, start the, I would have like a, stages or uh, states as my uh, sources. So you can say, oh my gosh, this guy actually painted this little girl from scratch as opposed to it's a little girl in the flowers and I go, okay, this guy put some sort of a painter filter on a photograph. Much more impressive if I say, oh my gosh, did they do that from scratch? I mean, that's 
talent way up here versus, you know, Painter's still good, but it's not like the person that's doing the whole thing from scratch, at least in my mind it's not, so. But does that make sense? Yeah. Um, here's another one, person here. Still you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same thing applies, of course, but, um, you know, because you're looking at, this is really hard, which one? Can we put that? Is it going to mess you up? Okay. Uh, I see it a little bit better. But it, it, it's very difficult to tell whether did you draw these in. Uh, if so, I would have sketches on the side that you drew it. For me, that's would be if it's maybe some sort of a digital background that you bought that looks exactly like that, not as much credit. You know what I mean? I mean, you could have found something like this on it. not saying you did. I'm just saying as someone who knows nothing about it, I don't know whether this is something that you purchased and dropped in or whether it was regular trees and you made it look this way or you hand drew it. Those are three different difficult difficulty levels. Um, so the source image is uh, very important. This looks really nice. I mean, again, you know, you're judging it on the screen. It looks a million times better on my screen. But like the hand coming up, um, assuming the stuff's not really dripping from it. I mean, it did you? Oh, okay. Uh, it was. It's a different image, but. Right. Um, well, in that case, I mean, I'd almost rather it be where it wasn't dripping, and then you added the dripping. And was, you know, if I see the hand holding the apple or whatever that is, just a regular apple, let's say, and then you've gone in and made it really shiny and made the blood dripping down, to me that would be more. You know, you almost have to create more work for yourself than you know. Your instinct is let me see what all you know. For example, painting that, spray painting the person's hand in the last image. That's the smart way of doing it. Like in the film days, you would have had to have done it that way. You paint her all up and photograph it, and that's how you have it. But now, you're from an MA degree, you're making things easier on yourself. You almost have to intentionally make it more difficult, if that makes sense. Go ahead and pose the hand wrong, and then do another hand the right way and swap out the hands. Just create more work for yourself. You know, go ahead and have a big strand of hair right in her face. Have, pick a little girl that's got a giant scar on her face and a black eye because she fell off the swing two days before and then make her look like a beautiful china doll. That, you know, it's much more like, oh my gosh, they took, I'm sure the parent was really thrilled when they came in for their portrait and the person created this out of this, you know, girl just got done with a you know, boxing match or something. So you almost have to do not so much prep work and leave more for the backside to get, to get more credit, if that makes sense. So like I was going to say that the paint dripping or the blood dripping or whatever, you'd be better off not having it really there. And then we go, oh my gosh, yeah, he added that blood. That looks really, really good. Make sense? You got to make it look as hard. I mean, as hard as it is, you got to make it look harder. And or not harder, but at least make sure you're getting all the credit for it. Which, because as a judge, I got to look at it and go, how hard was it to, to put everything together? And without knowing anything, if, if I said, I'm going to give you a picture of a hand with the stuff already dropping, she's got all this makeup on, and this is a, some sort of a <clears throat> painted backdrop or something that looks semi like that, and I'm going to give you those three images. I think most people here would say, I think I could fake it in kind of close. But when you see all those source images and say, no, 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 I started with this. Here's what she looked like. Here's These were just trees in the backyard. You know what I mean? Then all of a sudden you're making it look like, oh, my gosh, so God, how did he create this out of all this? So they don't care that you shot that piece in the studio. Not necessarily. Like, like why would they care about that? Well, it, it was not, it was oh, because it's outside. It's easy to put all that together in right. the studio. No, uh, you're, you're saying as opposed to her actually being out in a dark wooded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. No, I, I, I think people in this category, you kind of assume most of that was done in the studio. I mean, because uh, if it's a little girl running through the field of flowers in this category, that's not much to start with. You got to start with a girl running in front of a brick wall downtown, and then you drop her into a field of flowers. I mean, for this, because it's it's just not enough of a jump. You know, I mean, we all know that that's probably done separately because that's what the category is, you know, as opposed to in photographic open, all we're looking at is this. How cool is that image? You know, but in the MA, it's how much work went into it. How difficult was it? How was, which is a tough thing because how difficult that would be for you to create versus 
how hard would it be for you to create it? How hard would it be for you to create it? Probably three days. I gave you guys all three. Everybody in the room has to recreate this, even with the source images. We'd all finish at different times, and some would look fantastic. There'd probably be maybe someone that looked better than yours. There'd be a lot that would look terrible. I mean, that's just... And, and then there would, beyond that, there would be some that you look at and go, well, I like this better. I might look and go, well, I kind of like this one better. I mean, then you start getting into personal taste and things like that. So, but you certainly have to account for the, the difficulty. Make sense? So, yeah. All right, let's jump on to another one. Still you or is it somebody else? Anyone? <laughs> All right. Well, we do have the source image here, which is nice. Um, I wish they had shown the book. Uh, Should the source image be separate or part of the image? Like oh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't like that arrangement. I, I, things are driving me crazy. Um, no, I would, I would probably have the image up there and then have the sources going along the bottom. Uh, you know, because like, here's an example. When I see that book, I would assume that because they didn't show a source image of the book, that that was done, that they painted that book. At least that'd be my first thought. So then I'd look at it really closely and go, also because the perspective's a little off on the book, further makes me think that someone painted it by hand. Um, so I would, in that case, by putting that thing, you're kind of almost saying, yeah, I painted that by hand. I would still rather you remove all doubt and just on a little canvas show where you painted that. And then we say, okay, well, that person painted that by hand. That's, I mean, at least you're getting credit for creating it. You say the perspective's off, um, but, and like the drop shadow looks a little funny on it, but still, at least they've put that in there together. Which brings you back, you know, from here to here, it's a pretty good jump, but then it brings you down to that second thing that was killing me on the little boy blowing up is like, forget about all this. If you just look at that, would it merit? And I think that would probably struggle to merit. So they've, I think they've done enough work. I think they've certainly elevated that to at least the bird. I'm not crazy about the book. I wish they just left that out. But I think the bird is much more interesting here than here. Do you guys agree with that? Whether it's enough for an MA merit, hard to say, but it's a shot in the right direction. The problem is the final image. And I don't remember what the title was on this one, but um, does that help? Yes. Uh, are the judges going to be confused for the fact that there's a source image that's within the main image? That right, and that's what Margaret was asking. Yeah, yeah. It, it would definitely should be outside of the... I, I don't think it would confuse us. I mean, I think we all knew when we saw that 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 wasn't something that the bird had just dropped out. I mean, we know what that is, <laughs> but, but it would have been better to put it underneath. But again, that's probably someone that's never entered the category before, and they're trying it out, and they've seen the source images, and they're just... You know, and that's what happens. You get stuff like that. I mean, at the district, stuff will come through, especially digital. And one of the, you know, one of the programs I did this year at Imaging was on print versus digital. Uh, I did a Merit Cafe on it. Like, people always, that's one of the number one questions. Should we enter, what's, is it easier to enter print or digital? And you say, well, print merits vastly higher percentages. I mean, it's like 38% digital merit versus 51% print, something like that, roughly. It's at least a 10% higher thing. You say, oh, okay, they must score the prints higher. That's not why it is. It's because the better people enter prints. The more experienced people are still entering prints. Brand new people always enter digital. Nobody ever, at this point, goes for the first time. Like this summer, I'm going to enter nationals for the very first time. Let me do four prints. Nobody's going to do that. They're going to do digital. And so that pool is much more diluted by brand new people. So that's why those numbers are off. But the, the prints do merit higher, but, but not because they're on prints. So because of that, in the digital artist category, you would have more stuff like this where someone just didn't quite understand the, the concept. How are we doing on time? So far so good? All right, let's keep on trucking here. Got a couple more samples here. Um, so this one, I've entered a lot of the, like every year I've tried to enter one sort of cubist type thing. Since I did the self-portrait thing eons ago, I've kind of recycled it in a different angle on it every time. And this was one of the first times I tried entering it in the artist category because the image itself, these type stuff, type of images generally do pretty well in open. 
And so the test was to see how it would do um, an artist. So last year I took one, entered it an artist, and it merited, but just squeaked by. Um, this one ended up going loan, but I think it was, again, a lot you know, from where we started. Again, that was just a you know stock image of uh, some sort of cathedral or something. But it was a it, here to here is a pretty huge jump. Whether or not you like one or the other better, it's certainly a huge jump between that source and that. So you've certainly checked that box. And then when you look at the image by itself, would it merit? I think it would. Um, so that kind of checks both boxes. So that's kind of an easy example of having the technical thing and then having a, a final image that goes. But, you know, honestly, I'm still at the point where when I got my Ford that I send in, I've got no idea which is going to do well because you're kind of bound by your own stuff. I mean, I can't tell you how many people, it, I mean, I sat at that booth in the merit. Did you guys come by the IPC exhibit at Imaging, you guys that were there? People were coming by, we were doing critiques for people, all this stuff, and I can't tell you how many times there was an image that was clearly not a competition image. And it was someone that knew better, someone that had created all these good images, and they get to one that was just kind of a stinker. And you're like, man, this just isn't as good as the other ones. And they're like, what can I do? To, what can I do to this one? And almost always, let me guess, it's your, it's your daughter, right? No, it's my granddaughter. Oh, okay, it's your granddaughter. Okay, you know, oh, no, that's my, it's my son, or that's, you know. It's always a relative and like that, so... I think your own work is kind of the same thing. You've got to kind of, this isn't anybody related to me, but still it's your own work, and I think it's hard to look at it. That's why I have to send my stuff to, I got some friends that are judges that are tough judges, and I send it to them and go ahead and I figure if they don't catch something, then I'm safe. But uh, you kind of just have to go that route. You know, you kind of got to distance yourself because you, it's easy. So here's one that I entered last year and I decided I wanted to do it as a print. I'd gone in and painted it. Now, this is also an example of the confusing source image. People were like, well, why, did you, why do you have the two source images? And the problem was uh, one of the hands is different, I think. I can't remember for sure what the difference is. But I, mean, I can't even tell from looking at it how dumb it was. But one of the hands I had to swap out. And so in hindsight, what I should have done was just cropped in on the hand and put it there. And then they would have said, okay, you swapped out that hand. Again, no huge, oh, wow, he changed out that hand. That's what artistry, you know what I mean? But I'm just putting it on there so they don't, because if I don't put it on and someone sees that the hand posing is different, you're kind of assuming that, oh, my gosh, did he paint in that hand a different way, you know? And so I think you need to show all that. This one was obviously a matter of doing the paint. So with this one, I printed it on paper on watercolor paper and then I went in with acrylic and actually painted over it so it had you know 3D brush strokes actually on it and it was under a white mat and um, and it didn't merit and I was like Phew. so the next year I took essentially I didn't change this part at all I just I showed a little more of the presentation I mean a little more of the source so that they could see you know I don't know that it looked more like a, a messy backdrop and things and then instead of doing it on white, I did it more in key of the image, and, um, and I merited it. So, I don't know. Again, was it the presentation that made the difference? Was it that I made the sources bigger? Did I just get a, a friendlier group of judges? Hard to tell. Yeah, but sometimes, it, sometimes there's a little bit of luck involved. Yeah. Any questions about that transformation there? So that was a print versus a digital. The digital did better. Lucy? Shapes? Maybe it's the, the screen, but uh, that looks like she's flying in space. And, uh, yeah, I guess. Some, uh, not, enough shadow shadow. not enough of a base under it? Yeah. You could certainly make that argument. You know, again, that's the problem. That's why I would recommend not entering painter type images because it comes down to a very subjective type thing, um, especially, the, you know, the presentation is a classic example. You, I still think the white, clean, fine art looks better than that. Clearly that one did better. So, I mean, a lot of that becomes subjective, but the problem with Painter is it all comes down to what people like and don't like. I think the probably, in my opinion, the best painting that I've ever done was um, a self-portrait I did a long time ago of me sitting in a chair with a lamp next to me. 
I think that's the best paint work I've ever, that's the thing I'm most proud of if I had to show someone my painter work. And I'll never forget sitting there judging. Dave Huntsman, who's like a good friend now, we were on the IPC committee together, but I still remember, and I give him a hard time about it because he was on the panel and he's like, well, why is it that the light is bright, you know, the light should be brighter than his face because, I mean, I had obviously muted down the lamp so that the focus would come to me where I always want the focus to be. But he's like, well, that doesn't make sense. If that's the light source, it should be brighter than his face, which makes sense. But again, in a painting, it's more interpretive. And he was mad about it. I mean, he challenged it. And I think even when it came through ins and outs, he was, I mean, he was vehemently against it. And it just barely merited because there was a couple that loved it. A couple of judges loved it. He hated it. And the others were just kind of, eh. And so anytime you enter anything artistic, you are rolling the dice because most judges, and I say this as a judge, uh, I hate to admit it, but most judges do not have the, the biggest art background. They know photographs, photographic stuff, but when you start getting into painting and stuff like that, it is very hit or miss, and you got to be careful um, because they just don't know. I, I'll give you an example. I did, in MA one year, I did a recreation. Basically, it was um, for a school play. We did like a poster every year. And so what I tried to do was there's like 50 kids. So I decided I was going to kind of recreate the Sgt. Pepper album. You know, and I have all the kids, and some of them were black and white, some look in all different directions, right, like that. And I put it all together, and I couldn't figure out what to call it. And I don't remember what I titled it, but I, it didn't mention Sgt. Pepper or Beatles or anything like that. And to me, that was an iconic thing. It was clear that it was me doing a, you know, a tribute to a Beatles famous album cover. But I had two different judges on the panel. When I asked them afterwards, they didn't recognize it. They had never seen it before. They're like, I don't, I don't know that album. Like, you don't know Sgt. Pepper? You never seen all the people piled on? You can't assume anything. Don't assume that they're going to know anything art related. I mean, that's not even art. That's more pop culture. But still, to me, that's an iconic thing that everybody would recognize. And I was wrong, and it, it hurt me because they had no idea. They're like, why are some of these people are in black and white? This guy's flat lit. This person's got dramatic lighting on them. And the lighting doesn't match up. And, you know, all it would have taken was somebody to say, no, 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 this is a, you know, it's supposed to be that way. But I didn't have that. Nobody caught on to it. So very bad idea to enter painter stuff. I just did it because probably I was in a lack of things to enter last minute and it was like I felt like I could push my stuff through that I, I could paint it to the point that it would it would merit but just know it's a really hard angle to, to go through is because it's very subjective because it's impossible if I show you an image hey, look like on a composite so I, look your light is coming from that drop shadow is not in the right place I mean I can point out specific things but someone could stand up and argue that that is a beautiful well done painting, you could argue that there's a lot of errors in it and nobody would win. I mean, there's no way that you guys could convince each other whether that, you know, because it's one time somebody said, uh, one of the paintings, look, the brush strokes on the face are these short, tight brush strokes, and around the edges, it's big, fat, loose brush strokes. That doesn't make sense. Well, of course, it makes sense. That's how every painting in the uh, is. But nobody knows that because they're used to applying a filter where it's all exactly the same and they erase the face and the hands. But, but it's true. But you don't, you can't count on anybody knowing that. And so you're going into really uncharted territory. The more artistic you get, unfortunately, in that kind of artistic. All right, last one here, I think. No, oh, no, I got a couple more. So here's one that is kind of a good example of long distance or taking it. Taking. I mean, I tried to find. This was once I had figured out that you can't start with a good source image, that you're better off starting with a terrible source image. I even had the idea at one point, I was like, I'd just give my kids the camera and have them go around and take a bunch of pictures at the park, and then I'm going to take those images, you know, poorly composed, poorly lit stuff, and see what I can put together. And so I just tried to take the most snapshotty type thing someone would take with their camera type image and then process it to death, you know. And what's funny is, like that year at Southwest was this. It was the uh, the ballerina, the, the the cubist one that went lone, the uh, the painting one we just saw, and the kid blowing up. And the only one that merited was this one out of those four. I mean, I did this. I swear, I did this in ten minutes. 
I threw like six filters at it, tweaked the levels and stuff. It might have been 15 minutes just playing with it to try different things. The others took hours. I mean, that painting took hours. The Cubist thing took a couple of days to do. This took me like 15 minutes. It was the only one that merited. But when you look at the two, it's a huge difference from one to the next. And when you look at the final image, it's pleasant enough. I mean, you got to like that type thing, but I don't know, and it merited. It was a pretty solid, and it's a pretty solid entry. The problem you run into, again, is the presentation. You got this stupid black bar on the side, which I tried white on the side. That didn't look good. I tried the same brown color. That made this part look off balance. The presentation with the MA entries is difficult. Um, and I think it's uh, just a matter of trial and error, but I hate that part of the category. You know, uh, Great Wall, whatever their word, the two words are. Two. Yes, so he said it'd be funny. It would be funny if it said my name or uh, one of the judges' names or something like that. Is that the way you, just like that with the? Mm -hmm. Just like that. You gave him a digital image and it was just like that? Yes. Oh, okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not seeing it. It's cut off a little bit down here, but. <laughs> but there wasn't much to do with the black. I mean, I, I just, I couldn't come up with anything I liked, but it was exactly like that on the computer screen. So. I'd probably do it just like this. I'd do it all in one piece. I'd just take that exact file, print it, and mount it. It's how I'd do it. Because putting it under the mat board just creates so many other challenges, you know, to me. I just think it looks weird to have the offset open mats. And plus, it's harder to cut them um, when they're not the centered up mats. At least for me, it is. But, um, so that's, that's 116 by 20 or, or Yeah, 24, 20, yeah, 20, 24, whatever. That's how I, that's how I would do it. The problem you have with digital is you're bound by the, the horizontal landscape of the monitor. So if you do a tall, skinny, whatever, it's only going to be this tall, whatever the monitor is, as opposed to a print can be a full 24. So some people use that to their advantage. Something that's a little soft, you can enter it digital and you know it's going to be squashed down a little bit. Horizontal is no problem because you've got the big wide monitor. But, uh, and people have complained about that, like why do we get to see the images bigger on a horizontal than a vertical? And they've talked, there's some guys invented this thing that rotates the, but it, it was not going to be cost effective and things like that. Yes? I think that we need to change tapes on our video cameras. Okay. So this might be a great time for us to take a short break. Okay. Come back, have a uh, couple more images, not much. Well, then a lot of questions probably. That's when all the questions will happen. So hold your questions because we want them all on tape.